What's up YouTube? I just wanted to do a quick bike check of my specialized enduro comp. Uh, we're halfway through the season and I've had a really good time on this bike, way more than I thought I would. So, you know, with parts wearing out and a little bit of upgrades, this bike has evolved a bit. So I just thought I'd kind of point out some of the cool upgrades that have really enhanced the riding uh, enjoyment on this thing. So the enduro, uh, there's a 2018 model, so it has adjustable geometry. Um, 170 millimeters of travel in the front and 170 millimeters of travel in the back. Uh, the Enduro Comp for 2018 comes with a uh, RockShox Yari fork with an RC motion control damper and a Monarch Plus RC3 uh, on the back. So it's a, um, also, you get stock uh, 200, miller, uh, 200 millimeter size uh, disc brakes in the front and 180 millimeter disc in the back. You get Guide R brakes and a SRAM GX 11 speed drivetrain. Uh, what I have modified on this bike, first there's some things I modified right off the bat when I first bought the bike. Um, it came with Guide R brake levers. And you know, I wanted the extra stopping power and modulation, so I immediately asked my bike shop to um, not sell me the R's and let's just put the RSCs in there. And those are wicked nice. I mean the the S stands for swing link, which is like a cam uh, that's in that's built into the lever, which effectively if you imagine, it's almost as if this lever is five times as long as it is right now. Uh, because as you pull on the brake, it just amplifies your, um, it, it ups the leverage and stopping power that you that is experienced down in the, the disc. Uh, didn't change the calipers. Eh? They are what they are, regardless of the, le the lever you, whether you use the R, the RS, or the RSC, you get the guide uh, quad piston calipers no matter what and those are those are pretty good especially with the RSCs. Um, the other thing I upgraded right off the bat was I put an MRP uh, ramp control. Basically what that is is um, usually you put tokens to take down some of the, the uh, volume in your air spring. With an MRP ramp control you can adjust the number of tokens if you will or the the volume of space in the air spring on the fly. And so you can dial up the um, the progressiveness while you're out on the trail. It's pretty cool. Uh, also, I essentially upgraded this this fork to a Lyric RCT3. Um, basically, the Yari and the Lyric share the same physical chassis, but the fundamental difference between the two is the Lyric has the RCT, the Charger. 2 RCT3 damper control while the Yari comes with the RC motion control. So I added that damper to this and I'll tell you it feels great out on the trail. What else did we do to this bike here? I think those are things I did right off the bat. Um, learned how to jump, tick drops with, with, with joy and happiness on this thing. And in the process of doing so um, I wore out my cranks. The, I had This bike came with race face effect cranks stock and you know it, it's not bad it's not a bad crank but you know for me I'm kind of a heavy guy about a little bit under 200 pounds and learning how to take drops you come down like a ton of bricks I guess and the press fit side of that uh, crank kind of broke loose and got kind of cranky and and noisy and whatnot so I changed it at the time, I was eyeing or considering doing a 12-speed setup, so I took that opportunity when the crank died to just change out my entire drivetrain. So now I'm running X01, a pure X01 uh, drivetrain. So carbon fiber crank arms at 175 millimeters long. Uh, right now I'm running a 30 tooth, but I, I'm, I think my uh, strength and endurance has gotten a lot better, so I'm going to go back to the 32 tooth that it came with. Um, in the back here, we're running a 12-speed cassette, um, along with their derailleur, the X01 derailleur, all with red accents, which is kind of cool, and the the X01 uh, shifter is there. Can I get a picture of that? Uh, there she goes. Yep, X01 shifter. Um, aside from that, you know, uh, this bike came with Roval Traverse uh, aluminum wheels. And I had a, you know, you can run them, because they're wide, you can you can run your uh, tires at lower pressure. And I think I had it at too low pressure and kind of ended up flat spotting the rim. 
Uh, so I basically blew up a Reval rim. I was like, oh man. So I swapped out for the Reval Traverse SL carbon wheels and those are freaking amazing. Uh, they have DT Swiss 350 internals. Yes, I know the 240 internals are lighter. The 350s are awesome though. I'm running torque, the torque caps on there, so it's a nice broad interface between the rock shocks fork and the hub. Um, these have sealed bearings. I put on the red decals because I guess this bike has a thing for red. Uh, in the back, the uh, these wheels come with uh, DT Swiss's 54 tooth engagement, so that's about six degrees of engagement um, at the crank, which is kind of awesome. Uh, and, and that's the deal. Making these changes, what, what drew me to the X01 drivetrain and the carbon wheels was the shedding of weight. And um, right now, this bike with 2.3 uh, rubber in grid, this is a butcher slaughter um, grid, 2.3 size rubber, uh, with all this equipment on it, it's weighing in. This bike now weighs in at about 31.1 pounds. And that's without the plugs that come with the Roval Traver Traverse SL wheels. Um, well, and here's the thing, and here's the caveat. This bike, with so much travel and burly and being all aluminum, except for the cranks and the wheels, I really um, have it set up or enjoy taking it to the bike park where there's lots of, you know, stuff to hit, drop, etc., etc., lots of beating up. When I go to the bike park, weight doesn't matter. And in fact, so much so that I usually run, I run the 2.6 rubber that came with this bike, which is butcher, butcher, grid, 2.6s, front and rear. Weight's out the window because you're, you're on a lift. But around on my local trails where there is no lift access and I'm, on, I'm moving under my own power, um, that's when the weight aspect comes into play where, you know, in the interest of getting used to this bike and, and feeling how it feels under me and, and getting accustomed to what it's like to take drops off of it or jumps or what have you, you got to pedal up to come down. So when I'm in my local terrain, um, when I'm climbing, doing repeats and, and getting used to stuff, that's where the weight matters. And that's when I want to, that's when it's, it's nice to know that the bike's a little bit lighter than what it was when I first got it. Anyway, so yep, that's the bike check. Um, what else can I tell you about it? I'm still running the Command Post IRCC uh, dropper that came with it. That's a 125 millimeter dropper. I have thought about um, putting in like a Fox, a, uh, a Fox transfer post, maybe. But no, this post is working pretty good, so no big deal there. Uh, and I think that's it. That's what I got for this bike, this bike check. Hope you like it, and um, good riding.